Thank you very much. And well, you left off right where I wanted to get started. So thank you to Senator Sanders and uh, Senator Blumenthal and uh, Senator Hirono. Two of the issues that I care most about, women's health and the opioid epidemic. Um, I'm Congresswoman Annie Custer from New Hampshire, and I wanted to thank you for specifically referencing our bipartisan congressional heroin task force uh, that I was the founder and now the co-chair. We have 100 members of the House of Representatives working together, half Republicans, half Democrats. Very rare in this town. Um, and we have a great agenda for legislation. Uh, we're going to be working with the Senate on a uh, CARA 2.0, Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, that first passed in 2016. You might recall we uh, got a billion dollars in funding at the end of the Obama administration. Uh, just in the last uh, couple of weeks, six billion coming out of the, um, uh, the budget deal. Over the next two years, we're looking more toward 25 billion over five years. So this is really uh, taken its toll, particularly on rural America. And I would agree with you, the veterans were first in, and I want to make sure they're first out. And we've got some fantastic research going at the White River Junction VA um, on the border with Vermont and New Hampshire. A terrific researcher there named Julie Franklin, who's making uh, cutting edge progress on alternative pain management, acupuncture, all different types of alternative pain management, dropping the use of opioid medication by a half. And let me tell you, I've met with these veterans. They are much happier. I met a guy that was taking 160 pills a month. And uh, to get off that medication and to be pain-free, um, he was had a spring in his step. He was getting married, and he he had a whole future ahead of him. And um, so I really want to commend that research. And our task force would really like to work with you going forward on your priorities. But thank you for your specific reference. Um, I support everything that's been said about women's health. White River Junction also has a terrific new women's clinic built right into the very old building. I know you're dealing with old buildings across the country. Um, but they met with the women uh, members, um, veterans, and they wanted a separate entrance where they would feel safe. They actually redesigned the very um, uh, rooms that the physicians were working in with the women, and obviously a lot of mental health. Um, we also have a task force on ending sexual violence, and uh, women veterans can really help us in that regard, and, and um, making sure that they get the treatment that they need for uh, military sexual trauma and the rest. I want to turn the discussion a little bit um, because I completely agree with Senator Sanders and others that we want a strong VA. Um, I understand <clears throat> our community care partners, but I, for one, am opposed to privatization of the VA. Um, and in particular, I'm concerned that over time, our colleagues in the Capitol, <clears throat> they may talk a big game on privatization right now, but down the road when they get the bill, they'll, they'll drag their feet. And we want to make sure that every veteran gets the services that they need. I think we have a terrific opportunity with our federally qualified health centers, FQHCs. Um, and I'd urge you to look into this. We're going to be bringing forward legislation. Uh, my Republican colleague, Mr. Bilirikis, on the committee and I, and uh, we have uh, Scott Peters and uh, Republican Mike Kaufman from Colorado joining us on this bill. It's called VA Community Care Enhancement Act. And it's a demonstration project to allow the VA to coordinate care with FQHCs and provide veterans with the best options available. A number of reasons though I want to recommend it. This is not private for-profit care. These are uh, private, typically nonprofit organizations. They already serve uh, people, including many, many veterans, in our least served communities. So in my district that is rural, these provide critical lifeline care for uh, our communities. 
They maintain patient accountability and transparency because they are required by law to be run by a board of directors in which 50% of the members are active patients of the FQHC. Um, and they're required to see everyone, regardless of ability to pay. Uh, they provide mental health and substance use counseling and ser services in addition to primary care. So um, I'd love to ask you to take a look at our legislation. Um, we're happy to meet with you and talk about this, but it would be a critical community care partner and you don't run the risk of privatization of care. And then I'm just gonna move on. I, I wanna hear from you, but I've got so many things I wanna tell you as well. So uh, my time is limited very briefly. Manchester, New Hampshire uh, is going through a transition in terms of our uh, VA, and I'm very excited about what's going to come out of the task force uh, that's meeting there right now. But we are home to some very promising innovation that um, will mean a great deal to veterans, and that is the development of something called the Luke arm, if you've ever seen it. This is a prosthetic that is um, quite extraordinary, motorized and so advanced that it can manipulate small and delicate objects like a grape or grab items off shelves above a user's head. It's truly unique and revolutionary. And we would like uh, to present to you a possibility of a center of excellence around advanced prosthetics um, and ask if you would consider uh, a center of excellence for advanced bionics research and upper body prosthetics. And with that, I'll close my remarks. And if you have any comments on any of those FQHCs or the uh, prosthetics, I'd be very interested. Okay, well, well first, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for all of that. Um, as the last year has, has shown us, when it comes to veterans' issues, to start on your first point that you made, when it comes to veterans' issues, what you have all shown us is when it comes to veterans, veterans' issues trump politics and it trumps the partisanship. So I thank you for all working together for all of the legislation that you have passed over the last year and, and, and it's just been amazing. So I wanna say thank you for that. Um, Again, we are 100% against privatization. We need to make sure that our veterans who live in rural areas have the opportunity to, to get their health care when they need it, where they need it. But we are 100% against privatization, 100%. And I agree. And on all those other things you mentioned, we are eager to work with you. Terrific. We have a great staff. They're, they're ready to, to work with you. Thanks. My time is well up, but just a quick shout out to our New Hampshire uh, American Legion members. Thanks so much for making the trip. And with that, I yield back.